Hi everybody and welcome to a new video and welcome to Traveling with Russell, that's me. Uh, and here we are in Moscow, Russia. And today we're going to go for a little bit of a walk around of a kind of a shopping center, but more like a market. As you know, I work on cruise ships, I work in the shops on board, kind of retail is my thing over the years. So we're going to go for a walk around a place called Danilo uh, Danilovsky Market. I practiced it like five times before I started to film this. Uh, Danilovsky Market. It's named after a monastery nearby called Danilovsky Monastery. And it dates back to 1282. 1282. Now that's just crazy, isn't it? I mean, just think about how old maybe the town or the city or the country you live in dates back. And this place has been here since 1282. That's just crazy. I think so anyway. So we're going to go for a little bit of a walk around. We're just going to go have a check out and see what's there. It's really neat inside, so let's go, shall we? Uh, just before we walk in, I just thought I'd point out we're uh, kind of at a major intersection here. And there's kind of, uh, as usual, Moscow uh, traffic. All these yellow cars are all taxis or ride-sharing cars. There's Uber, Yandex, and then there's some buses back there as well, but there's a lot more taxis and ride-sharing cars on the streets than, what's, than what I've seen over the years that I've been here. But I actually want to point out this building right here and how Soviet it looks and how kind of 70s, 60s it looks and how just boxy and I guess kind of some people would say ugly, some would say beautiful because it kind of shows that kind of original Russian Soviet look but it's uh, kind of a huge building. The actual lower three or four levels is actually a small shopping center and then up the top is apartment buildings and they kind of cantilever over the edge if you see those top few floors right here. Um, it's kind of just very interesting when you walk past it because people sort of would never notice it but people like me do. So uh, this is the market we're going to head into right here. It's um, kind of got an interesting shape to it so uh, it's been rebuilt a few times obviously since the 1200s. Uh, most notably just in 1970 which was kind of prior to which would be the 1980 Olympics. And while they were building a lot of the structures for the Olympics, uh, they were building uh, Luzhniki Stadium, which is one of the, which was the main stadium of the Olympics. Also, where the uh, World Cup was recently held in 2018. So the actual design is actually, it looks like, like shells or clamshells. If you look at the angle of the roof, it looks like clamshells or shells. And it's basically kind of a domed roof. It's a circular building, but the domed roof kind of took its inspiration from one of the architects that was building the uh, stadium for the Olympics. So yeah, it's a kind of interesting sort of building. So yeah, imagine going shopping. I mean, 1282, that's just a, that's a lot of years ago, isn't it? Yeah, we can just see there the sign, Danilovsky. Danilovsky Market. I keep getting the words mixed up when I keep saying it. So if you come here, it's a little bit sort of early afternoon now, so the sun's sort of going down. But there's a ton of outdoor seating here. Now it's actually kind of a beautiful sunny day here today. But it's only about 11 or 12 Celsius, so it's not very uh, warm in terms of sort of normal temperatures where you might live or where you are around the world. but. For Russia, prior to kind of going into the winter, it's still nice and warm. But there is a seating that goes on forever and ever. So you can actually still sit out here. There's a few people out here. Everyone's in jackets and hats and coats. But um, you can take your food from inside and bring it outside. You'll see that once we walk in, you'll see the uh, a lot of food sort of uh, takeaway places. So yeah, let's go on ahead on inside. And I hope we're going to... Uh, have a nice experience filming. They don't tend to like some places filming, but hopefully we'll look like we're a blogger or vlogger and they'll kind of think it's okay. You'll see here, I'm not too sure which is the things that they don't allow, so let's have a look. Shall we? We can figure out what the pictures are, shall we? So one's Wi-Fi. Uh, Wi-Fi. 
Uh, no rollerblades, no smoking, it's no bicycles. Uh, it's dog friendly, that's kind of good. It's dog friendly, so you can bring dogs in, but you can't bring your roller skates. And also they're encouraging the uh, food delivery services or pickups. And then the one thing that I'm a little bit confused about is the peace sign. So I wonder if it's uh, kind of, we come here in peace. I'm not too sure. So let's go and walk in. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut away and cut back just to make sure that we're okay having a walk around. Okay, so we've come on inside now. Now the uh, one thing that's a little bit different here, we have to wear a mask. Now you can actually kind of interestingly put it on but then people are really just barely wearing it. Now this place, so again, this is a kind of a, a domed roof and there's a glass sphere up the top. So if you're kind of watching this for the architectural side of the video, this uh, kind of big roof is quite a kind of interesting structure. So what we'll like do is we're gonna have a little bit a lap around. So you've kind of got two major just businesses in here. You've got a lot of food offerings I actually just walked past a kind of nice cake one right at the beginning there. And then you've got um, a lot of, uh, so you can basically order food, beer, different things like that. So you've got some uh, pay by weight uh, dried fruits right there. Yeah, so it's a little bit, there's a lot to take in as we walk around. So let's just see what we can do, shall we? Um, so we'll kind of go on the outside. So this is basically a rinuk or a market. They call rinuk. But this is basically like a posh rinuk, let me say. There's lots of different food. Uh, actually, a lot of things here are too are in English and Russian. Um, so that there's no kind of uh, discrepancy with tourists coming here. It's very touristy as well. So it's... Um, really neat. I think it's a cool place this. I've been here a couple of times before and uh, we come here just basically for lunch. We don't generally come here to buy any kind of snacks. Oh look at all the food right there. How neat. So what we'll do, we'll kind of do one lap around. Peace, love and bread. That's kind of cool. The guy's selling fresh baked bread. Pretty sure he's not making it on site, but... And then we have... Famously, uh, the flowers right here. So yeah, we'll kind of see food markets, and then we're going to see a lot of uh, food takeaway places. Anybody like pomegranates? So they have the whole pomegranates, and then they have just the juice as well. Which is... Uh, Kind of neat. What we'll do, we'll go around the outside of the building. There is actually a second level as well. I've just noticed there Jamie Oliver's cookery school, which is kind of interesting. It's a nice wine bar right here as well. You can see the fruits and vegetables. So basically a, a classic rinuk that you'd go to in, uh, in Russia. Looks, would look very similar to this. We've been to a few before in other videos on my other channel. Um, but this is basically more in the center of Moscow. And it's a little bit more uh, upscale. What are they serving here? Pizzas, I think. I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's... Um, one of the guys on this side's got a uh, meat stall or meat markets. So yeah, Renex basically have um, mostly different types of, of foods available. This lady's got candy and lollies and different sweets. A lot of imported things here. You'll see a lot of things that are not common in the supermarkets in Russia. Milky Way there. Actually Kellogg's. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, it's very, um, the Rinuk, close to where we live uh, in Aprilovka, um, has basically just all the different foods, vegetables, fruits. You'd have a milk lady, you'll have a cheese lady, you'll have an egg lady, and each person will be basically selling one lot of items. 
So, and I always find when I come here, you've got to not come here hungry, or you'll end up buying lots of things that you didn't think you needed. So, some great cakes right there. What do we have? Some fresh breads and bakery items here. These are kind of neat, aren't they? My only downfall when I come here is I'm ordering the wrong food because I don't really, I can't read the uh, the language very well. So. Different cakes. This looks like plof, which is basically like a rice and vegetable kind of meal. Very nice. And again, more flowers. These are more kind of uh, and more native flowers than regular ones. There's a, another cake shop right here. Now, if the sound is muffled, it's because I'm wearing the mask, but not on properly. So, of course, I don't condone not wearing the mask properly, but it's very interesting, the food. And this is actually an Asian stall, which we've actually had here before. Which is, uh, there's different soups in these huge containers. So when we come here before, it was crowded. So there's a couple of people just ahead of us here. And they choose the different things. Can you see them put them into bowls? And then they come ahead and then put your uh, soup base into here. So the one thing that... Uh, the Lofsky market sort of famous for is it's kind of multicultural kind of food offering. Lots of tomatoes again, cucumbers, all the different fruits. Check that out. Yeah, so you can come to the basically to uh, this market to get food from anywhere around the world. A lot of Asian foods. Actually, we've had these mangoes before. So they have mango. Uh, smoothies right here the only bad news is is the mangoes are 20 26 dollars a kilo which is just uh, insanely high but this is the thing with this market you can get anything all these uh, different meats and cured meats Crispy duck. It's my dad's favorite. So if he's watching this video, shout out to my dad who likes his duck when we go to the Chinese restaurant. All the different Russian um, juices here. They tend to call them compotes, which I'm pretty sure is French, if I'm not mistaken. There's a Greek stall right here. I just have to take note where we got where we started at, so we don't do the lap twice. Jerusalem, Moscow, hummus, the hummus. That's kind of neat, isn't it? So yeah, it's all about that kind of very big mix of things and foods. And it's not busy, busy. It is busy, but this is Moscow busy, which is fairly normal all the different Chinese dishes that we're used to. The bao buns, noodles, and they're doing it right there. That's the duck it looks like again. <laughs> K-Town Korean noodle bar. There's a couple of, uh, there's one here doing smoothies and the acai bowls. And then you can also get the um, crepes and pancakes, which is very nice. So the key again is not coming here when you're hungry, because you just, well, you want to eat everything, but you just can't choose either. Now, this place here actually has Australian meat pies. Now, I remember this from last time when I've been here. 
And why I remember this is because they have Australian Bundaberg drinks in their fridge right here. So, along with whatever, chowder and pie. So I guess they're doing soups and pies. But how strange is this to be in Moscow, Russia and then have Australian drinks in the fridge right in front of you? Sushi. There's a crab bar there as well. I guess different crab offerings, I guess you would say. What are these guys doing? Oh, these are like... Uh, Pigs in a blanket, like fancy versions of sausages in a bun, I guess you would call it. Yeah, a lot of um, kind of very niche, very uh, kind of uh, unique food kind of uh, offerings of the coffee shop here. And then some more cakes. Have a look at those. Oh, amazing. There's uh, like quiches. <laughs> All right, so now we're back at the middle. So what we'll do from here is we'll take a walk around the middle and we'll check out some of the food that you can buy, not uh, which is basically to take home and, and cook. All right, and here we go with all the different fruits and vegetables. So this, now what's very interesting in Rus Russia is a lot of these uh, fruits and vegetables are from Russia, but there's a lot that are imported. I mean, obviously seasonally with the weather, it wouldn't allow uh, them to grow in the in season. From Australia. Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Спасибо. <laughs> yeah, the uh, a lot of the fruits, obviously with the weather, wouldn't be able to grow in these weather conditions. So you've got sort of plums here. You'll see blackberries, raspberries, so many varieties of grapes, watermelons, pineapples, plums, peaches. So it's kind of just insane, you know the uh, the selection that you can get all the different uh, honeys here now one thing that's been a very big positive for Russia is um, with a lot of the um, a lot of the embargoes with different countries in Europe and different things like that it's basically created a better economy as it going yeah oh from Azerbaijan oh okay yeah I know that a lot of things are not Russian so yeah, the pomegranates. Pomegranate. Huh? In English, it's pomegranate. No, in English, pomegranate. Uh, pomegranate. Yeah, that's the name in English. So, <laughs> yeah, so the um, a lot of the Russian economy is sort of uh, kind of flourishing because they're encouraging a lot more local. Um, manufacturing or growing and things like that but they're still going to struggle all the cheeses here I hope I'm not walking around too quickly this is kind of a second semicircle so we can walk around kind of twice and have a look at all the different uh, mostly fruit and vegetables here it's a lot of things for salads radish spring onions And then there's a lot of uh, kind of, it's very trendy to come shopping here, by the way. So now these ladies will hate getting on camera, I think, but, and they're running away now very fast. It's okay. But how neat are the ladies dressed? Here's some um, the fish eggs. I'm not very Russian to uh, caviar, caviar and the crab. So, how cool. Now, 
this is, um, to be very, very honest, I would tell you that, um, let's say the average Russian isn't coming shopping here personally. It's, uh, you know, people will come here to have lunch and have dinner, but uh, in terms of coming for uh, supermarket shopping, it would very much be kind of the, I would say the middle to upper class uh, who would be here for sure because let's say the price comparison here with uh, where we live in Moscow region oh look at the just look at the colors and how fresh everything looks there's some uh, kiwis right there in the middle uh, we'll have a look at the fish in a second we'll go past all the different meats here so hopefully everybody kind of enjoys this kind of a little bit of a walk around do I speak English? Oh, <laughs> how are you going? We're doing a little walk around to make YouTube videos. Uh, YouTube. I put on YouTube. So, um, it's a very interesting market. Since 1282, very old. It's, uh, have a look here, the mandarins. Oh. So they're definitely, uh, it's definitely that kind of traditional market that we're used to, but it's just a little bit fancier. Um, my wife and I, we probably wouldn't kind of, we'd maybe buy something here that's unique that we can't find in, um, in our town, but in terms of the pricing, it kind of jumps up a, a whole lot. The price per gram or price per kilo. Have a look at all the different dried fruits here. How cool are those plates up the back as well? Different spices. So one thing that's probably not normal for most people is you wouldn't have this open kind of style shopping. So basically they put it into bags and then you buy it by the gram. And that's sort of something that's not common in most places. No. Hi. Thanks. <laughs> Very cool. It's a mushroom. A mushrooms. Mushroom. Oh no! Yeah, these are definitely mushrooms. <laughs> I uh, came alone today, so I don't have my wife as the her tr as our translator. Um, so <laughs> all the basic uh, foods and fruits, I can't uh, translate what they come out to. Um, yeah, obviously we know the, what the shape is and things like that, but some of the specific names are a little bit tough to make out. Now this right here, it's a prawn bar, how neat is that? And then they're doing, actually they're uh, not doing lots of preparation here, it's not too busy right now. And then we're going to have a look at the fish. So on the outside of the market, we had all of the uh, the food and cafes and all the salmon here. Um, and then on that middle ring was all of the uh, fruits. Uh, not too much vegetables, mostly fruits. Some oysters. I'm pretty sure that they shuck them right here. And you can eat them literally as they come. Have a look at this. This is king crab right here. These are just monstrous king crabs. And in the back here you can see the the fish here in the tank as well. So uh, yeah, this is basically. Uh, prepared uh, salmon is a huge favorite in Russia uh, not as many people kind of eat let's say uh, normal fish salmon is basically the more common uh, fish offering if that's the word so these are all priced by the kilo as well uh, 
Yeah, it's very, very uh, interesting. Oh, sorry, thanks. To see uh, there's a guy there just preparing uh, some or filleting some fish. So basically, you're buying them as whole fish, and then they get filleted on the spot. You take them home. There's some octopus there. Look at that. So yeah, let's just spin around and have a look at some of the vegetables or fruits here. So I've come up to the second level here so we can get a bit of an idea of the scale of the place. Now, it doesn't look as big from up the top here, but obviously when you walk around, it's a little bit of a maze of uh, all the different shops. Then there's a sort of a seating area up here as well, so you can relax and uh, it's not as uh, busy as it is when you're walking around downstairs. Each of the little cafes kind of has its own little seating area, but it's not sort of uh, a lot of space. The place was sort of full, full, but yeah, I just think it's uh, a very unique place to come to and consider a shopping center that dates back from 1282. Now, just take that in for a little while 1282. So, that's kind of uh, it's got a bit of age to it, and it's obviously seen a lot of changes over the years, but here we are today in 2021 having a look. Okay, everybody, so we kind of come to the end of the video. And of course, you know, I always, if you've watched other videos, I like to do a bit of an outro or a kind of talk at the end of the video. You can click off anytime you like now. But uh, I hope you've found the walk around of uh, Dinov, Dinelovsky Market kind of interesting. I think it's really a neat place. It's uh, kind of like a food hall, I guess. Maybe where you live, there's food halls, I'm sure. But is there a food hall from 1282? Uh, I know in Australia there's not because we're only 200 years old. So this only dates back another, what, 700 more years. So yeah, as we come to the end, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this walk around and tour of the food market here in Moscow, Russia. And I'm gonna head off for another adventure. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna post a comment, maybe talk about what you've seen in the video. It's always interesting. I'll try to respond to every single comment. That's kind of my thing with this channel. So no matter what, um, yeah. Thanks for watching, traveling with Russell. Thanks for coming on another adventure here in Moscow, Russia with me. And I'm heading off now for another adventure and we'll see you soon in the next video. Bye everybody. Bye.